I know that the last video ended here, so I just wanted to make sure everybody understood how to get the information into their graphing calculator for a chi-score test for independence or homogeneity. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to put your observed values into a matrix. So number one, you're going to hit matrix on your graphing calculator or second x to the negative one hit matrix. Go to edit, make sure you go all the way over to edit. Then you're going to go to matrix A and hit enter. Once you get there, you want to make sure that you type in the row by the column for the matrix and go ahead and type your numbers in. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to run the chi-square test. And this is going to give you your p-value, your degrees of freedom, and it's going to give you your expected counts. So next you'll hit stat, go over to test, and you're going to go to chi-square test. Now notice, it's just the chi-square test. Here will be the chi-square test and the chi-square goodness of fit test. For independence and homogeneity, you must use this first one because it pulls from the matrix, not the list. Once you hit enter, calculate or enter, it will go ahead and give you your chi-score statistic, your p-value, and your degrees of freedom. So remember on the AP exam and on your test, you can absolutely 100% use your graphing calculator to get your answers. Just make sure that you're showing a couple of statements. Make sure you're including your statement that says the probability Okay, the probability that chi squared is greater than 18.27 is equal to 0 0.0011. And then also make sure that you're stating two of your chi square statistics. So you need to show two of the observed minus the expected squared all over the expected plus you'll need to show two of them. Okay, so now how can you get those expected values on your graphing calculator so that you don't need to work for them every single solitary time? So what you're going to do is once you've done the chi-square test on your graphing calculator, you can get your expected counts. You have to run the chi-square test first though. To get the expected counts, go to your home stream and you're going to call up matrix B. So hit second, x to the negative one, which is your matrix, and then what you're going to do is you're not editing this time. Notice how you have matrix two, which is matrix B, and that is now populated with a three by three matrix. That is going to be your expected values. So go ahead here, hit, go scroll down to B or number two, hit enter, make sure you hit enter, that's important. And then after you hit enter, your matrix B is going to come up with all of your expected values. Now notice, you'll just have to scroll over in order to get the rest of them. Hit the over arrow and it will give them to you. Just make sure when you round that your rows and your columns add up to the totals that they should be. All right, now let's talk about a chi-score test for homogeneity. So with a chi-score test for homogeneity, we are testing to see if there is no difference among the distribution of a categorical variable for several populations. So what's key with homogeneity is that you are going to have several populations or several treatments. So I think of it like this. So you're taking population one, okay, population two, and then you're breaking it up into categories. So then maybe we're checking population one is, um, you know, male versus female, and then population two is male versus female, and then what do they think about um, history versus science, okay? So you're taking two separate populations and then breaking it up. Or the tricky part here is with treatments. So treatments can come from one population, that would be the only time, but that one population is getting maybe, let's say, three different treatments which is essentially creating three different populations. So be on the lookout for that. So multiple populations or multiple treatments. Our alternative is that there is no difference in the distribution of a categorical variable for several populations or treatments, okay? So you're gonna, we've already talked about this, so start by finding your expected counts. You're gonna make sure you get those in your graphing calculator. You're going to have to show your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected two of those, okay? 
And then your degrees of freedom, remember, is your number of rows minus one times your number of columns minus one. The p-value is always going to be the area to the right of your chi-square statistic, okay? So chi-square statistic, no matter what you have, is always going to be this area. Therefore, when you write the probability, you're always going to write the probability that chi-square is greater than. All right, what exactly did we mean by a follow-up analysis? So a follow-up analysis must be done whenever you reject the null. So what exactly are we talking about with the follow-up analysis? So the chi-score test for homogeneity allows us to compare the distribution of a categorical variable for any number of populations or treatments. If the test allows us to reject the null, then we need to do a follow-up analysis that says, why are we rejecting the null? What is giving us a large chi-square statistic? So you're gonna start by examining which cells in the two-way table show large deviations between the observed and the expected value. So this is the same as the goodness of fit. So which ones, which observed values are far away from the expected counts? Then we're going to look at the individual components to see which terms contribute most to the chi-square statistic. So if you take a look at this, okay, if you notice, here is our observed and here's our expected. Here's our observed, here's our expected, here's our observed, here's our expected. And then this is your chi-square statistic. So this row down here is your chi-square statistic. So let's take a look and see which ones were large contributors. Okay, if we notice this 7.672, that's a pretty large contributor, and so is the 6.404. So those two, okay, are going to be our largest contributors for our chi-square statistic. So those two distributions are not the same. The rest are pretty similar. They're not too bad, not too far off, but this is contributing most to that chi-square statistic, okay? So if you take a look right here, this 7.672 and this 6.44, which add up to be about 14, they're taking up almost all of that chi-square statistic, which is 18.28, okay? So your specific conclusion here was that orders of Italian entrees are strongly affected by Italian and French music. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples and see if you can figure out which chi-score tests you're going to use. The Hakai Survey Company was contracted by the Zimmerman Footwear Company to see what type of footwear college students are wearing. Two random surveys are taken. Is there a difference in the proportions of the types of footwear worn by male and female students? Here's your expected or your observed counts in the table below. What kind of chi-square test should we use? All right, did you think about it? So let's take a look. For this one, we are using a chi-score test for homogeneity. Did you get that correct? Okay, the reason is, all right, we are checking to see if there are two different population proportions that are the same or different. Now notice how this says two random surveys are taken. After the two random surveys are taken, then they are split up into male and female and sandals, sneakers, leather shoes, boots, and other. Okay, notice they kind of gave you your totals right here. So this is 50 and this is 50. I'm guessing that the two random surveys were male and female. And then, okay, so here was our simple random sample one. And here was our simple random sample two. Then after they took that simple random sample, then they asked these questions. So two populations, therefore it's a chi-score test for homogeneity, and we're going to see if I was going to draw these, okay, are the male, the number of um, sandals, and male and female the same or different, sneakers same or different. Okay, so what you're going to do is on your graphing calculator, I absolutely would get that expected values from your graphing calculator. Always do this first because you have to show this on your test. This is very important. If you don't have your graphing calculator to do it, remember you're going to take your row total times your column total divided by the table total. So for example, this 9.5 right here came from your row total of 50 times your column total of 19 divided by your table total of 100. But if you plug this into your graphing calculator, just go ahead and get the expected count straight from that matrix B. Now let's go ahead and see what this chi-score test looks like. 
make sure you include your state portion. We are using a chi-score test for homogeneity if conditions are met. Notice we stay to the name of the test. Now, for your simple random sample, you have to state it for both of them because there was two simple random samples, one for male and one for female. So it's important to show both. The independence, notice once again, there's two samples, so I had to show it for both. There's more than 500 males and females for the study. The last one's your expected counts. They're all greater than five. We've shown that in the table. Now, what does the null and alternative look like? Remember, your null is assuming there's no difference. There's no difference in the distribution in the proportions of types of footwear worn by male or female. The alternative is exactly the same, just with the word a difference. Or you could just say, you don't have to add the word proportion in there. You could say there is no difference in the distribution of the types of footwear worn by male and female. You don't have to include the word proportions there. What's the do part look like? Well, remember you always need to state your degrees of freedom. Since we have more than one row, okay, we're gonna have to do our row minus one times our column minus one. We had two rows, male and female, five columns, okay? So one times four is four. Include that degrees of freedom. Then you need to show your chi-square statistic work. You don't need to show all of them, get it from your graphing calculator, but you need to show two of them of your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. So notice I have two of them, first and last, whatever, and then you have your chi-square test statistic right here. Make sure you state this probability statement and remember it's always going to be greater than because this is skewed to the right and we're always looking for the upper probability. So it's 0 0.0072. So your calculator will not give you this portion. It'll give you your p-value and your chi-square test statistic. Now we can come up with our conclusion. Once again, all right, let's take a look at our p-value. Pretty small, 0 0.0072. So since p is less than alpha's 0 0.05, there's sufficient evidence. Now notice what the um, conclusion is stating. There is a difference in the distribution of the types of footwear between men and women. Now, the next question, the next statement is the interpretation of your p-value. So remember your p-value is always assuming that the null is true. If there was no difference in the distribution, then the probability of getting a statistic as extreme as ours is 0 0.0072. You have to state that null statement first. This is statistically significant and could not have happened by chance alone. Now, since we rejected the null, we must do a follow-up analysis to say which ones potentially contributed most to the chi-score test statistic. So if you take a look right here, let's take a look and see which ones are farther away. So this, if you look at the female was 13, the female was 9.5 in sandals. So that's about three and a half away. Take a look at your sneakers here from 17 to 11. That was six. We could also look here, five and 11. Okay, this should be 22 down here. Okay, the 13 are and the seven are only three away from 10 and 10. My boots, nine and 12.5 is only 2.5. I have bigger than that. 16 and 12.5, so that is three and a half away, okay? And then here, five and seven and nine and seven are only two away. So my three largest ones are what I have highlighted here. So men wear more sneakers and women wear more sandals and boots than expected. So just it's a quick analysis to show you what is potentially the most different. Okay, another common situation that lead, 